In this video, we'll be drawing, placing, and editing objects in a plan view in order to demonstrate the various ways of interacting with objects in Chief Architect. Before we begin, it is recommended that you use a standard three-button mouse with Chief Architect as we take advantage of the left click, middle click, right click, and scroll wheel inputs for various actions. While some of these input methods can be simulated with another input device, like a trackpad or stylus for example, it may make navigating the program more difficult. In Chief Architect software, most actions use the left button on the mouse, whether it's drawing objects, placing items from the library, or selecting tools. The right mouse button is used for special commands and will be called out in such instances. So unless explicitly stated, when we say click, we mean the left button. The scroll wheel has a few functions. In most views, like plan views, camera views, layout, etc., the scroll wheel will zoom in and out when you roll it forward and backward. Pressing the scroll wheel down acts as a third, middle button and evokes the pan tool allowing you to move the drawing or rendering around on the screen without having to zoom in and out to see other areas of the plan or view. Many types of objects can be drawn or placed into your plan by simply selecting a tool from the menu or toolbar and clicking into the drawing area. However, some objects need to be drawn rather than simply placed. To do this, with the tool selected, click and hold down the mouse button, move the mouse in the desired direction, then release the mouse button when the object is the right size or length. This behavior depends on the tool selected. Objects that are placed into the plan by simply clicking will not do anything when dragged, but will be placed once the mouse button is released. Likewise, objects that need to be drawn often will do nothing when simply clicking in the plan. However, some objects can do both. Stairs, for instance, will be drawn as you click and drag. But single clicking in the plan view will create a full flight of stairs, automatically generating with the right number of treads to reach the floor above. Since it can sometimes be difficult to know how many stairs are needed for a given area, this can be a nice shortcut. Similarly, many CAD polyline objects can be dragged out to whatever size you need. But when clicking in a blank space, a two-foot square is created. This is important to keep in mind, because if you don't switch off of the Polyline Rectangle tool and click somewhere else on your drawing, you're likely to create accidental square polylines when intending to select some other object. The Undo button in the top toolbar will revert the last change, removing one of these unwanted boxes with each click. It's also important to note that when clicking to select CAD-based objects, you typically must click on one of the edges because the center of a polyline is empty and it isn't treated as part of the object. If you still have the Polyline Rectangle tool selected and you try to click the center of a polyline shape or accidentally miss the edge, you'll end up creating unwanted squares and there are a number of polyline-based tools that behave in this manner. There are a few ways to avoid this, but the easiest is to simply drop the current tool selection by pressing the space bar on your keyboard. This is the keyboard hotkey that changes your tool selection to the Select Objects tool, which you can also click to select in the toolbar, but pressing space is typically much faster. With the Select Objects tool active, you won't be placing or drawing objects, Rather, you will only be able to select them, giving you the ability to modify existing objects. Selecting an object, you will see a variety of small shapes appear on it. These are called edit handles. Note that you have to click once to select the object before you can use these handles. Simply clicking and dragging an object without first selecting it is likely to create unwanted objects or make unwanted selections. The reason for this is that with the Select Objects tool selected, 
Clicking and dragging anywhere on the screen will create a rectangular selection marquee that will group select any object or objects it encloses or touches. Now there are two objects selected, which limits the edit handles to a group move and group rotate action. The selection marquee makes it easy to delete a group of objects as well. These selected objects can be deleted by simply clicking the Delete key on your keyboard or by clicking the Delete button in the Edit toolbar at the bottom of the screen. The Edit toolbar is a special toolbar that contains tools that are specific to the object or objects you have selected. This same list of tools can be accessed by right-clicking on an object to expand a contextual menu. But be wary of getting into the habit of right-clicking objects, as the act of right-clicking first selects the object you clicked on, and then opens the menu. So when group selecting multiple objects, then right-clicking on one of them, you'll see the selection change to show just the one object selected, and as such, the actions in the menu only apply to that one object. The same is true of double-clicking, which will open an object's specification dialog, allowing you to edit various properties of the selected object or objects. For this reason, it's good to get into the habit of using the keyboard shortcuts for common actions like Open Object and Delete, or simply using the Edit toolbar buttons. When hovering your mouse over an icon, you'll see a keyboard shortcut listed, if one is assigned. If you find yourself needing to use a tool for repeated steps and that does not have a hotkey, it might be a good idea to assign a custom hotkey to that tool. More on this in another video, though. Another function of the right mouse button is to perform alternate draw or edit behaviors. One example of an alternate draw mode is the continuous draw mode for line-based objects such as walls. When selecting a wall tool, then drawing a wall by pressing the right mouse button, releasing the button creates the wall as normal, but the draw function is not completed. Instead, when you move your mouse, even though you are not holding down either button, a wall is being drawn from the last point you clicked. This allows you to draw additional wall segments quickly just by moving your mouse and clicking at each corner. The draw process is completed once you meet another wall or by double left clicking an endpoint. There are also a few alternate edit behaviors, for example. When selecting a line based object, such as a CAD line or a wall. When grabbing the main move handle in the middle with the left mouse button, the wall or line is locked at whatever angle it was drawn and simply moves back and forth. You'll notice, too, that the walls connected on either end grow or shrink to remain connected. But when selecting the Move handle with the right mouse button, you are able to move the wall to an entirely different location, completely disconnecting it from the other walls. The End handle normally allows you to change the location of the end of the line, or wall, thus potentially changing its end angle. But when using the right mouse button, you not only change the endpoint of the wall, but also convert it to an arc or curved wall. And this is the same for many line based objects, even stairs. Alternate behaviors can also be enabled via the menu under Edit, Edit Behaviors, by changing it from Standard to Alternate, though this changes your left click behavior so all actions from that point on will be an alternate action, and you'll have to change back to standard afterward, so it's not always ideal. They can also be enabled by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard, or Option if you're using a Mac, while performing the function normally with your left mouse button. When placing, drawing, or editing objects, you are likely to notice some automatic behaviors. For instance, Objects may appear to be magnetically attracted to other objects as you draw or place them, and line-based objects, like walls, will only draw at certain angles. All of this is due to snap settings. Looking under the Edit menu, 
Under Snap Settings, you will see toggle buttons for Object Snaps, Angle Snaps, Grid Snaps, and Bumping and Pushing. Object Snaps allow objects to snap to other objects at a variety of locations, endpoints, and midpoints of edges, center of objects, etc., allowing objects to be easily aligned with one another. Object snaps can be used in a number of ways. Most commonly, object snaps can be used to align objects immediately while placing them. For example, selecting the draw line tool when moving the mouse over the edge of another object, such as a polyline rectangle, you will see a red square appear on the corner, marking the endpoint of the two edges, and a triangle marking the midpoint of an edge. Drawing a new line from one of these markers will ensure that the start point of the new line starts precisely in line with the existing line, endpoint, midpoint, etc. You can also use object snaps to align objects that aren't next to each other. Drawing a new CAD line and selecting it, the edge handle can of course be dragged to move the line. But if you want to align it with another line, edge, or object, even if it's on the opposite side of the drawing, simply drag its move handle over to the edge or object you want to align it to. You'll see the same snap indicators, allowing you to align it to another parallel line, the center of a perpendicular line, etc. Simply release the mouse button with one of these indicators active and the affected edge will be snapped perfectly to that object. This is a fast and easy way to make sure your drawings are clean and accurate and can be a time saver, potentially allowing a single measurement to apply to multiple items. A similar function, the snap extensions, also helps place and draw objects in proper alignment the right way. Also located under the Edit Snap menu are the Tangent Extensions, Perpendicular Extensions, and Orthogonal Extensions. Our curved wall best demonstrates all three of these. Selecting the Straight Wall tool again, simply hovering your mouse over various locations on an object, you will see a small circle appear along with the snap indicator. These circles mark a potential extension line that can be used to draw or place another object. Without clicking the mouse button at all, simply moving the cursor off of one of these circles, you will see a blue dashed line extending off an arc's tangent, either on the end of an arc, as well as off of the arc's center handle, as denoted by the triangle snap indicator. A perpendicular extension can also be made from these same points, extending 90 degrees from the snap point. Lastly, orthogonal extensions will display extension lines in orthographic directions, up, down, left, and right, relative to a snap point. Extension indicators will extend off of any endpoint, midpoint, and quadrant snaps, so long as they are enabled. As you move the cursor around the plan, you'll see up to two of these indicators at any time, allowing you to use two extensions in order to determine possible intersection points without having to draw and erase temporary lines. Continuing down the list, the Angle Snaps setting forces objects to be drawn at specific allowed angles. By default, objects will snap in 15 degree increments, so you can be certain that the objects you are drawing, walls for instance, are at proper angles. You can see how the snaps and extensions help you when drawing even a simple structure. Next, the grid snaps keep objects placed in the plan aligned to a grid. By default, this is set to a 1-inch grid, meaning that objects that are placed or drawn will always be created, moved, or resized in full inch increments. The snap grid is rather small, so you don't normally see that it's there unless you zoom in close. Here, you can see that the wall's framing layer are aligned perfectly on the grid. And when selecting the wall and dragging, its selected edge edit handle, 
The wall moves in one inch increments. Of course, not every dimension in a structure is going to be a whole number, but this gives you a good starting point that you can use dimensions to fine tune afterwards. Bumping and pushing allows objects to not only bump into one another, but also push each other when moved. This prevents objects from being pushed into one another inappropriately. This affects objects like walls, wall openings like windows and doors, as well as cabinets, furniture, and fixtures. All of these automated snaps can be individually toggled on and off as needed through the Edit menu. But since they are typically very beneficial, it is recommended to only disable ones that seem to prevent you from working the way you like. Remember also that these snaps can all be temporarily disabled for individual actions by holding down the control key on your keyboard if you are running Chief Architect on Windows, the command key on a Mac. Use caution when doing this, however, as the software will always snap objects with more precision than we can.